So Breville makes a great line of consumer espresso machines, but it's not easy to choose one because there are over 10 models available, all with different features and all at different price points. But fortunately, I've already tested most of the models on this channel, and today we decided to bring in everything we own into the studio. We had so many models that it actually barely fits in our studio. Well, we're going to go through all of them today for you to help you understand how they differ, how you should choose, and then my top picks. But first, I want to make a quick note. I bought all of these machines with my own money. It started with a Bambino, then I bought a Barista Pro, and then you could say I developed a little bit of a problem. Revel did not send me any free product, and all opinions are my own. But if you do enjoy this video, I would appreciate it if you hit like, or consider subscribing, because it really does support the content creators out there. Now let's get started. First, I'm going to put a graphic on screen that's going to show all the Revel models and their main features. I'm pointing this to make it easy for you to see how they differ, and we're going to refer to this a couple times in the video. Now, if this is a little small on screen, we do have this on our blog, and that's linked in the description below. We're going to continually update that as new models come out. But we're going to start with the entry-level models, the Bambinos. You can tell they're distinctly smaller than any of the other machines in the Breville lineup, but what they lack in size, they make up for internals because Breville did put their newer Thermojet heating system in these models. And Thermojet's nice for two reasons. One, it starts in three seconds, so you can be making espresso right away in the morning. The second, the newer design of the thermal block is a thinner substrate material, so it's more efficient heat transfer, and so I tend to find these have better temperature stability than some of the older models. Both the machines have a pretty simple interface. You have a one cup and a two cup buns that you can program based on volume, which is nice just to get the same size every time. And they both have steam wands. But the big difference is the Bambino Plus has an automatic steam wand. So all you really have to do is lift the steam wand, put your milk jug underneath. There's a temperature sensor in the base to help regulate temperature, and you get three settings for texture and temperature to use. Personally, the steam wand on the Bambino Plus is good, but not quite my favorite, and I usually err towards the Bambino just because it's a less expensive model and good for beginners, but both of these are great options. Now let's talk about the infuser and the duo temp. These are also two Breville's entry-level machines. Now, they're slightly older models, and you can tell they have much bigger water tanks at about 1.8 liters each. Now, what they have in size, they lose on the heating system because they use the older thermal coil. So this takes about 30 seconds to start up, and I do tend to notice the blocks get quite hot, and so you can sometimes get bitter espresso, a little more sharpness in them, but they're still quite good, especially for the price points. So if you want a bigger size, these are good options. Now, if you're comparing the two, you'll notice the main difference is really the interface. The Duo Temp has a pretty simple knob where you can kind of turn on espresso brewing, or you can turn on steaming. Meanwhile, the infuser has the volumetric controls for one and two cup. It also has a pressure gauge, which helps you understand how your grind size is, the pressure is too high or too fine, if it's too low or too coarse. And there's also a hot water spot on the infuser as well. So I tend to prefer the infuser for that extra programming, and I think it's worth the price. But personally, I would tell you just to err towards the Bambinos. So now let's move to the Breville Barista line. The Barista line are Breville's most popular models. And the big reason is because these all come with an integrated conical burr grinder. And this makes the machine a true all-in-one. You can grind, you can brew, and you can steam all with a machine, it makes it a lot easier to use because the grinder doses right into your port of filter. It's a big step up and it's really made espresso accessible to a lot of home baristas out there where you can get a really good brew where you can also have full control over with a semi-automatic with a lot of ease of use and credit to Breville for coming up with really good integrated grinder models. Now let's start with their first one, the Breville Barista Express. So the Breville Barista Express is one of Breville's most popular models and maybe one of the most popular espresso machines ever. It was one of the first models to have this full integrated system in a very high quality way. You'll notice it has a pressure gauge and the one and two cup buns in the front. You also have some extra programming for your water temperature and it has a pre-infusion time which is really nice. You can tell the grinder has about 16 settings which is a little limited for me. I wish it had more settings to dial in. I tend to use setting two and four. Also this does have the older heating system, the thermal coil. So it takes a little longer to start up. I've noticed it takes a little longer to switch from brewing to steaming as well. And steaming milk for me tends to take about 75 to 90 seconds versus a thermojet, which is a little bit faster than that. So it's a great value, but I do think it's becoming a little dated with the older heating system. So that takes us to the next model, the Breville Barista Pro, which is a direct upgrade from the Breville Barista Express. 
So now you have an upgraded Thermojet heating system, so it starts faster, it brews a little more consistently. You also have an upgraded grinder that now has 30 settings on it, so you have more room to dial in. You also have an LCD screen, which is a little bit easier to program. You have a little more control over the water temperature. You can also program your pre-infusion time, which helps your espresso a little bit as well. And then the Steam One also has a four-hole tip. Four-hole tip is just a faster steaming system, and I found you can steam milk in about 45 to 50 seconds, like I said, versus the 75 to 90 seconds for the Breville Burst Express. I think this is a really nice upgrade because, like I said, everything is improved across the line. And while it comes at a premium to the Burst Express, I think it's worth it to get the newer heating system. Now, if you want to go one step further, we have the Breville Barista Touch. The Touch is now one more step up from the Pro, and you have the touch screen, which the machine is named after. The touch screen has five different pre-programmed drinks, and the screen is really easy to use. It's probably the most intuitive machine I've ever seen. I've never needed to open the manual for it, which is a rarity across any espresso machine. But the big upgrade on the touch is the automatic steam wand. So all you have to do is you lift up the steam wand, put your milk jug on the temperature sensor that's built in the base, and the machine does the rest. But I like this a lot more than the Bambino Plus version because you have a lot more settings. You can actually control your temperature to 10 degrees, and you have eight different texture settings. And when we were testing this model before, we found those texture settings made quite a big difference. And the temperature was very precise and very consistent. And on top of that, the Barista Touch Steam Wand is actually partially insulated. So there's a little bit of plastic on the inside. And that just makes it a lot easier to clean off. So you can just wipe the wand, and when you put it back down, it'll auto purge. So it's a self-cleaning steam wand too. So this is just another what I would call more luxurious upgrade over the Breville Barista Pro is it has just ease of use, the steam wand and the touch screen. Now, I will warn that I didn't quite use the functionality of the touch screen, and this machine is a decent step up in price. So it depends on what you want. Now, I've said there are four Barista models. We only have three here in the studio because there is one that we don't have here, and that's the Barista Express Impress. This is Breville's newest model, and it looks a lot like the Barista Express, but it has one really nice feature, a self-tamping system. So when you put your portafilter underneath the grinder, it'll dose in there, and then you have a lever that you can just pull down, and it'll flatten your puck. That is the one downside of a lot of these semi-automatic machines. Even though it grinds your portafilter, you still have to do a lot of puck prep. And so Breville's kind of gone one step further in the revolution of making espresso easier for the masses and created this really nice self-tamping system. The Breville Barista Express Impress will also give you feedback on whether you're grinding too fine or too coarse so you have enough dose for your portafilter. Now, the downside of that machine, though, is they've kept the older heating system, the thermal coil, and the steam one still is a one-hole tip, so it's a slower steaming process. I'm a little tore on this machine and need to, use, need to do some more testing on it. I've heard good things about how the self-tamping is very easy to use. At the same time, it's actually a little bit more expensive than the Versa Pro as of this filling, and it has the older heating system. So we'll come back with more on that later. So now let's talk about the top tier of the Breville Espresso machines, starting with the Breville Dual Boiler. So this is an entirely new heating system. The other Breville machines use thermal blocks. Like I said, the thermal coil or the thermo jet, but the Dual Boiler has a dual boiler. And that has a lot higher temperature stability because now you have a dedicated heating system just for brewing and a second one just for steaming. And on top of that, the dual boiler also has heating in the brew head. So your brew head's also heated. And you can tell because you can change the temperature to one degree increments and it's highly precise. You can also brew and steam at the same time and you can see the steaming starts instantaneously. Now, I'm not sure how many people are really gonna brew and steam at the same time, but having that extra temperature stability is very nice. On top of that, they've redesigned the pump system on the dual boiler. As you can tell, there's a different overpressure valve, and the pressure rarely goes above 9 bars. That's actually a good thing, because you tend to have a more steady, smooth extraction, and it just aids in that smoothness of the taste. I've just found this is a nice step up versus the other machines. Now, the downside here, one, there's no grinder. So you're going to have to buy a separate grinder for this, and this machine is more expensive than the other models. So you're not only have to spend more on the machine, but you're going to have to buy a separate grinder, and you should be pairing this with a pretty nice dedicated espresso grinder to get the most out of it. That said, it's a good upgrade pick. If you already have maybe a Burst Express or a Bambino, this is a good step up. 
Now, there are two other models to round out the line, and those are the Oracle models. The Oracle models have the dual boiler heating system, but the Oracle now includes a grinder and an automatic steam wand as well. And you can also get the Oracle Touch, which also adds the touch screen and a self-tamping system. So Oracle Touch literally includes everything that Breville has, from the grinder, the dual boiler, the automatic steam wand, a touch screen, and self-assisted tamping. Those two models are really nice. They're also quite expensive. And so if you want something that's truly all-in-one and have a really high-end machine that can do everything, I'd recommend those. For everyone else, I think you can take a grinder with a dual boiler if you want a high-end model. So we've just run through all the models, but now how should you choose one of those 10 plus models out there? I don't think it's an easy call because there are no outright bad models and Breville tends to price everything appropriately. But let's talk about the main factors you should think about before deciding. First is the heating system. This is going to be the main determinant of your espresso quality and it's something you can't change in the machine. So you can either choose the older thermo coil, the newer thermo jet, or the upgrade dual boiler system. Personally, I would at least go for the thermojet. One, because I think it's a little bit better than the thermo coil, And two, it's just a faster startup time, so it's easier for you. And there are models that aren't really more expensive here to, that still have that newer heating system. Second, do you want to have a model with a grinder? The integrated grinder is a lot easier to use. And it's what brought a lot of home baristas into the market. Now, however, I think it's a little more subjective than that because while well, it's easier to use with the integrated grinder, you can find better grinders out there, especially nowadays as there's been a wave of new espresso grinders that are actually targeted more entry-level users. So I think you really have to decide, do you want ease of use or do you want a little higher quality, but be more of a mess and more workflow on your mornings? Third, the steam wand. Do you want a manual steam wand or an automatic steam wand? Now, personally, I don't think it's hard to steam milk on a Breville machine, it, I'm not very good at steaming, so I think anyone can really pick it up. But the automatic wands are, like I said, a nice luxury upgrade, especially on the Barista Touch. So that's just something subjective for you as well. Fourth, the interface. I think as long as you have something that has programmable one and two cup buttons, you'll be pretty well off. But the higher level of model you get, you can have the LCD screen on a Barista Pro, or you can have a full touch screen. And so they become more intuitive, but I'm not sure if they quite add feature functionality. Again, depends on you. And then last, what is your budget? How much do you want to spend? Like I said, Breville does a good job pricing their products appropriately, which is what makes this decision hard. But I'll kind of ask yourself, what is your budget? And I would think about it into three kind of categories. Either the under 500 level, maybe more of an entry level model, the under 1000 level, for maybe something with an integrated grinder, the more intermediate machine, or the over 1000, in which case, if you have the budget for that, you should get something with some better features and a better heating system. So I really recommend everyone think about what matters the most to you. Go back to our table, which has all the 10 models. Think about the features that matter the most. Think about the budget that you have. Maybe circle the models that have most of the features you want at the price that you're willing to spend. And that'll help you a lot. So we've gone through a lot and I'll wrap up by giving you my top three picks of different budget options. So. If you're new to Espresso and you're not sure how much you want to commit to this, I would recommend going with the Bambino. It is a great entry-level model. It has a newer heating system, so it makes good Espresso. You also can set a one and two cup volumes on this. It has some other nice features for Espresso, like a pre-infusion and a PID controller, and it's perfectly good for steaming milk as well. You're going to need a good grinder with it, but you can find a good value option, like a 1Z Espresso J Max or a DF64, which are both excellent, frankly. Now, if you have a $1,000 budget and you want an all-in-one, I recommend the Breville Barista Pro. This has been my go-to for most of the time in making espresso. One, it's just easier to put into my kitchen with limited space. I like the ease of use of dosing strains, the porta filter, and it's got plenty of customization. The regrind settings, the LCD screen, and also the four-hole steam wand is a lot faster for froth milk. Now, if you want an upgrade option, I'll look at the dual boiler. This is quickly becoming my go-to as I'm getting used to the higher espresso quality and the better temperature stability. And I love that it rarely gets above nine bars for a smoother extraction. It's also helping me improve my milk frothing as well. Now it's not quite as easy to use. It is more expensive and you do need a nicer grinder, which I've been using the Eureka Mignola Specialito with it. Now, if you want to see any more detail, you can go 
in our blog, which is linked in the description below, along with all the products that I just mentioned. And if you found this video helpful, I'd really appreciate if you hit like or consider subscribing to see future videos. It just supports me buying even more machines to review for you in future videos.